So again, I'm very happy to be presenting about the perspectives of diabetes self-management, education, and support, which we call DSMES. So, and knowing about uh, how important is education and that the title of the IDF for this year is gonna be around education and the tomorrow of the, the people living with diabetes. I will be mentioning, okay, sorry about that again. I will be talking roughly about non-communicable diseases, the types of diabetes to understand which types are preventable and how important it is to be educated about that, the burden of this disease, what is the self-management education, uh, what is the self-management education and support when we add the support to it. I will mention some research uh, work supporting the SMES and the management of type two diabetes and its relation to this uh, perspective by itself. Also, what are the barriers and the challenges that we face in today's world? And of course, the conclusion. Okay, so to just to mention very quickly how important it is To, uh, to see that diabetes, oh my God, one second, please. Something is happening on my screen. All right, I got it. So if we think that the non-communicable diseases are killing 40, 41 million people each year, which accounts for approximately 71% of all the deaths globally, uh, this is by itself an eye opener and a call to attention and to immediate action. And the NCD associated mortality is expected, unfortunately, to increase. Now, if we look at the four main NCDs, which are the cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, and chronic respiratory diseases, we have common four modifiable risk factors, the tobacco use, the unhealthy diet, the physical inactivity, and the harmful use of alcohol. Now think with me how important it is to educate patients on the importance of those uh, modifiable factors. And when we say modifiable, it means if we do simple lifestyle changes and we are well educated about the topic and about the importance of those changes and their positive impact on our health, the impact and the outcome should be tremendously positive. So uh, I have to mention here the types of diabetes. I'm sure you're all aware of that. We have uh, the type one diabetes, which is 10% um, approximately uh, of the total cases of diabetes. The type two diabetes, which accounts for 90% of the total cases. And here you can see that, yes, it can be prevented. How? Through education. And yes, it can be better controlled how through self-management uh, of the disease and also the gestational diabetes, which can be preventable by healthy lifestyles, healthy mm -hmm. diets. Oh my God. And physical activity. Let's talk about the burden of the disease. People living with a chronic condition makes their lives really difficult by itself. And if we are gonna think about the drug and non-drug treatments and sometimes how difficult it is to manage your disease with the drug treatments and the non-drug treatments and the self-testing and the self-monitoring, it cannot be easy. And it is mostly complicated for the majority of people. Um, I had a power outage just now. If I get disconnected, please bear with me. I'll try then from my phone. So that by itself and how difficult it is to manage may result in psychological consequences. And we've seen that during the pandemic, people living with chronic diseases are most more affected than others. It can also result by familial consequences in the family, in the household, 
by social consequences, by um, misjudgment, misconceptions around us in society, and definitely financial consequences. Leading a healthy lifestyle can be costly. And also we can see one of the results is low treatment adherence. The patients do not comply with the treatment resulting uh, in, in that affecting their quality of life. Now, um, the diabetes self-management education, if we wanna talk about a structured educational program that should address the comprehensive blend of the visits to the doctor, the clinical part, the educational part of the patients, the psychological and psychosocial parts, and also the behavioral aspects that are needed definitely for daily self-management. It's, it's like a combination of many components. It provides the foundation to help the people with diabetes to navigate uh, through their daily self-care steps. You, you do know, and I'm sure most of you uh, or all of you are professionals, and deal with patients. And you do know that there are several steps, there are uh, many uh, aspects of the life of a patient to be considered when we talk about the education. The, if we're gonna talk about the support needed for diabetes self-management education, which is the DSMES, here we have a consensus report from the biggest organization, diabetes organizations in the world. You can see some of them. And it was done in 2020, which states that through diabetes education, we can provide critical um, education and support for the implementation of the treatment. We can have, as a result, the reduction of emer emergency and hospital visits. Don't we all want that as an outcome of the education? Uh, it can reduce hypoglycemia, all cause mortality, and it can lower the HbA1c, definitely all of them uh, positive outcomes. It addresses the weight maintenance, which we do need, and we educate our patients to always manage their weight within the normal parameters because it reflects on their overall health. It also improves the self-efficacy and this is very important, the quality of life. We don't want the patient just to live with diabetes. We want our patients to live a very good quality of life, although they have diabetes. To continue with the same topic, let me say that diabetes self-management education and support can be provided or modified at several stages. Four critical times will be mentioned here. Ideally, at diagnosis, it, there should be an offered DSMES and the proper education for the patient. Annually or whenever uh, we are not meeting the targets, or whenever there is no compliance or no adherence to the treatment. Uh, and when complicating factors develop, if we see that uh, the patient is developing, is starting to develop complications, then we do need to review or modify our diabetes self-management education and support tools. And the fourth one is when transitions in life um, uh, occur. Example, if the patient is a young lady who gets married, if she's pregnant, um, you know, or if they're going through any patient is going through um, a period of extreme stress. At those times, uh, the uh, tools and the policies of our diabetes self-management and education, uh, education and support should be revised and modified, but we need to continue providing them. Uh, we continue with the topic stating that engaging the adults with type two diabetes that we all know is preventable. Uh, engaging them in DSMES can result in many beneficial ways. 
and clinically mean, meaningful improvement, not just the mindset and feeling good and the well-being of the patient, but clinically also it, it has been proven that it affects the A1C, for example, which is a major impact. The greatest improvement and are achieved when we have uh, diabetes self-management and education and support involving both groups and individual education. Sometimes we need a one-to-one -one session when also it is provided by a team versus a single individual. It's been uh, proven to have a greater impact through a team, especially having a multidisciplinary approach when it involves participants who attend more than 10 hours. We don't want the patient to come once or twice. We want the patient to attend all the program that uh, uh, that uh, entailed by diabetes self-management education and support. And also it, uh, we have best um, improvement or greatest improvement when it is tailored to the individual participant. We do know that every patient deals differently with the disease. So the, it's very important to have an individual approach. If I want to mention a couple of research uh, made about the topic of education and support in relation to diabetes. There was a five-year retrospective study of 59 individuals with type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, performed in France. And therapeutic patient education was found to be very effective in reducing both the BMI and the A1C. You know, it's very important. We're talking here about a very important health indicator, which is the BMI and the A1C. And in another cross-sectional study of 100 Lebanese people, individuals with type 2 diabetes mellitus, adults, it was found that it contributed to better glycemic control, better diabetes self-efficacy, management self-efficacy uh, scale, and also the summary of diabetes self-care activities. And this study was proudly done by Dr. El Jirgis, who is on our scientific board at Dialab, the National Diabetes Organization. So I'm very happy to be mentioning it. For the sake of time, I will uh, skip and continue with other researches. Uh, for example, in a randomized controlled trial, and those are small uh, samples, as you can see, that we are not talking ab about big numbers, but when we mention DSMES, and we want really to follow up with these patients since the minute they start and, and discover all the outcomes and uh, the results of this uh, study, for my personal opinion, it doesn't matter if the sample is huge or it is limited to 50 or 600 or maybe 13, like it is in this case, where they discovered that the participants, uh, when, when they were doing healthy cooking to affect their uh, diet, it was found that they lowered their A1C and also their body weight. And they improved, again, the magic word, their quality of life. There was also this study, the meta-analysis of 696 participants with type 2 diabetes mellitus, and it was discovered that the use of diabetes self-management education and support applications had significantly, significant small to moderate effect on medication adherence and HbA1c lowering, of course, the HbA1c and the uh, body mass index or the BMI. We can see endless studies and research being done and showing this. And this makes this topic extremely important, especially when we talk about the management of type two diabetes. We know that when we talk education and awareness about type two diabetes, we mention two pillars. Definitely after the doctor's visit. Let's not forget that. The one pillar is the physical activity. The other one is the nutrition. 
which lead us to say how important lifestyle changes, sometimes minor lifestyle changes, can impact tremendously uh, how we are living with type 2 diabetes. And of course, you see how important it is, the self-management through lifestyle. The barriers are many. We have the lack of awareness, the limitation of referring providers who sometimes patients want education. They don't know where to go. They don't know who is providing this education and the misunderstanding of the necessity and effectiveness of how important is diabetes self-management, education and support. Also, we have the financial side, the patient related uh, such as cost, and we have also the timing, the transportation, especially in the low-income countries. Uh, we the one another barrier is the lack of administrative or leadership support. Like it's the policy needs to be reviewed. We also have another challenge, which is which is the limited number of diabetes care and education specialists, and the limited resources in general to market. Okay, so um, my desktop died. Um, I don't have the presentation in front of me anymore. But after the um, barriers that were mentioned, I will mention that in my conclusion, I'm stating that by educating our patients and by raising their level of awareness on the importance of self-management efficacy, we can reduce the costs, we can reduce the emergency visits, we can make our patients live a much better and higher quality of life, and definitely we can prevent many, many of the complications related to NCDs, especially diabetes in this case, and uh, those outcomes are incredible. They should tell us how important it is to absolutely revise our policies and try to implement new ones if, they, if we find lack of efficiency and try to uh, implement uh, new policies if we don't have any in our organization, given the importance of diabetes, self-management and education. Uh, I want to apologize about the interruption and uh, maybe there was something more I wanted to talk about in my presentation. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, I don't have it anymore in front of me, but I think um, I was able a bit to highlight the extreme importance of DSMES and um, my references were also in the final slides and my big thank you to all the organizers of DiaCareCon and especially to Dr. Banshee for inviting me to be on this panel. Thank you very much.